Hey guys, what's going on? So today in this video, we're going to be talking about my four lures that I would pick if I could never use any more lures ever again. So these are going to be the four main lures that I would use if I could never use another lure again. Now, this is a video that has been done before. It's been done probably a lot of times. But the one that I just watched today was from a channel called Yak Daddy. Go check out their channel. It's an awesome channel. Um, they do tackle unboxings and fishing and it's vlog style videos all the time. Go check out their channel. I will have a link in the description if I can remember it. Don't get mad at me if I don't. I will have a link down in the description at some time. Or in the comments. So yeah. If it ain't, I apologize. So, anyway. So here are my three three baits plus one of my own. I had to throw one of my own homemade Docks Lure Company baits in there. Just for good measure. But these are the four main lures. Now, the four main lures, honestly, are quite a bit like his. But different in a couple different ways. So... His video, he picked a Chatterbait, a Senko, and a Whopper Plopper, and I do agree with that very well. One of the baits that I do agree with is a Chatterbait. I have Chatterbaits. I love using Chatterbaits. One of my biggest five fish limits ever I've ever caught was on Chatterbait. It's probably around 15 pounds. Good, good bait, especially in the fall and the post-spawn. If you guys are down in Texas right now, the fish are spawning and pre-spawn. They're like in that multi-stage area where it's spawn, post-spawn, and pre-spawn. Um, but if you're in that area, a chatterbait is great for the bass. Why? Because if you can find a bed, this is a good bed bait still. Because you can cast it. You can be blind casting on like a flat. One of my favorite ways of using this bait, I've done it before, I think this was actually when I caught my 15 pound limit on a chatterbait. I was actually using a white Z-Man chatterbait with a, um, it was a full size swimming fluke. Um, I was using that and I don't think I have it here. Um, if I do, yeah, I think it's in here. Okay, anyway, I'll keep talking. But I was using that. And it was, I think it was late April of 2016, and I was just jacking the fish on it. This here is what I was using, this same exact chatterbait, just with a different trailer. Um, I don't think I have the actual, yeah, I do. This swim bait here I actually have just on a jig head, but I would normally use that as a trailer. It's a little bit bigger of a profile, but that's good for post-spawn and pre-spawn fish. Anyway, that's what I was using, just a white Z-Man chatterbait. Anyway, get back to the rest of what I was talking about. I was actually taking it and fishing it. I was basically just blind casting on a flat. Now, this flat was about a foot deep all the way across it, and then there was a ledge where I don't really know what the depth goes to, but I know it's somewhere around three feet um, in that area. I don't know if it just stages off to three feet from a foot, but whatever. I don't know. But I was taking the chatterbait and just casting it out on this flat in one of my favorite ponds. I've made a bunch of different videos there. Um, but anyway, I was taking it and just casting it blindly. And I believe what I was doing was actually finding some of the late spawners and post spawners because I was just casting it out both on the ledge of the pond and also in the middle of the flat, just sitting there burning it through, not super duper fast, but at like a medium speed and just not stopping it for nothing. And I would get thumped and I'd cast right back in there and I would have a fish almost immediately after I get to that spot. And plus, you know, it's just a great bait for all different waters. You know, you can fish it in clear water, you can fish it in deep water, shallow water, muddy water is really good for these. Um, this one here is a custom um, bluegill color. Um, it's a really good bait and I actually have a Reaction Innovations uh, Skinny Dipper on the back really good trailer um they're not as tough as the zoom because one time actually just out in my pond i had it stuck on a swim jig i had one of these on it and i was getting the swim jig free and the tail just fell off i don't know why but it just fell off um but if i do have a preference for trailers i would pick either a a blade minnow made by strike king or a uh swim and fluke junior or the big one um, from Zoom and Z-Man Chatterbaits or this company here. I will try to have the links 
caught it. I didn't drop it. Haha. -ha. I will have the links in the description um, if I can find them all. There's a couple baits. There's one bait on here that I don't know if I'll be able to find. But I know I'll be able to find this one. So yeah. Make sure you guys go check out that place there. They make uh, all kinds of ones. If you live down in Mexico or uh, Texas or Florida, they have tilapia colors. They have crappie colors, which is really cool. I'm thinking about getting one of those. I actually don't have any crappie imitating baits. Um, but they have bluegill, crappie, shad. Um, I'm pretty sure they have a, like a baby bass color as well. Um, they have uh, tilapia. They have just basic colors like uh, chartreuse and white. Um, they have just basic colors, you know, green pumpkin, white, black, and blue. But they also have some really unique colors like this one here. If you look, it goes from orange, green, to blue. Really cool looking in my opinion. So next is one of my all-time favorite baits. Now he, in his video, he said that a Cinco is one of his all-time best catching fishing baits. In my opinion, it's the trick worm. Why? There's just so many different ways you can rig it. You can rig it wacky rigged, mojo rigged, shaky head, drop shot, weightless rigged. Uh, you can topwater fish this if you know how to do it right. I mean, you can fish it just about any way. You can put it on a double rig. You can just about do anything with a trick worm. Now, you're probably wondering, well, Michael, how do you make a trick worm topwater? And if you look, something else, this is a little tip that I've learned. If you split the tail, like you guys look, that's how the tail is normally supposed to be. But if you split it, it'll actually have a little bit of a kind of a action to it. It'll have a little bitty action to it. And it looks really cool in the water. Um, but if you take it, you just rig it up on a 2 watt 3 watt EWG, and you just cast it out on top of the grass mats and just move it really slowly, almost like a little snake, these things destroy the bass. And they will come up three feet in the air for these things. I had a bass scare the bejesus out of me one time, literally like a foot from the bank, with this little worm just dangling off of my rod tip, sitting there in the water. Scared the bejesus out of me. He just came up there and swatted at it, and I pitched right back in there with this same little worm, and cast it back out there and ended up catching him and it was about a three pounder. These things catch monster fish if you know how to use them right. Shaky heads, drop shots, I caught one of my personal best on drop shot with that, with not that color, um, but yeah. White pumpkin and green pumpkin are my favorites. Um, another co good color is watermelon seed or watermelon red. Both those colors work well. I prefer white pumpkin or green pumpkin. So. Of course, I have to talk about my baits a little bit in this video, um, but, but seriously, if I had it, even if I didn't make my own baits, I would have to have one of these little swim baits in it. A little bitty swim bait like this. This one here is my Doc Slewers 2-inch swim bait in the clear color. I had a couple people talk about the clear baits that they, that they want me to start selling them soon, and trust me, I will be starting to sell these pretty soon, probably either in the middle of this month or at the end of this month I will start selling these. Um, but I'm, I really want to get out there and see how all these baits look in the water. I think they're going to look really cool. But I don't want to start selling baits that I don't know how they look in the water, obviously. Um, I haven't actually gotten to try these yet. But I think the clear swim bait on a really sunny day is going to look really good. So next, of course, you know, as the name hints, I love topwater fishing. And just like he picked a whopper plopper, and I do agree with that choice to an extent, but I'm going for multi-species with this bait. This bait, now, the other baits, I've actually caught pretty good sized bluegill on trick worms. And these little swim bait like this, this thing will catch just about anything. I actually talked to some people um, while I was fishing on Sunday. They were in a big fancy bass boat throwing in Cinco's and spinner baits. And I talked to them, and I showed them them baits, and they said that they should work for just about anything, and I agree with them. I mean, I mean, you guys, if you guys have seen the comments and the video from County on Line Outdoors, he's going to use them for redfish and trout in the salt water. And I think that's really cool. And I think that these things would be awesome on, like, a big crappie lake. Um, like, uh, what's big crappie lake? I know Lake Fork's got some giant crappie. Um, I've heard that Lake Lanier's got some big crappie in it as well, but, you know, big crappie would smoke that thing. And the chatterbait, I've seen people catch some monster-sized crappie. The Illinois state record was caught on a Strike King Pure Poison bluegill-colored chatterbait, half-ounce size. 
and it was four pounds, eight ounces. That was just last year on Kincaid Lake, and that's a lake that I'm actually going to hopefully this year, and I'm going to be throwing some big swim baits trying to hook a muskie. That's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, Kincaid Lake is somewhere I want to go this year. Um, and it was, it was a four pound, eight ounce crappie, black crappie. I think it was a black crappie. They ended up classifying as a hybrid. I mean, if you look at the picture, it looks like a black crappie to me. I mean, the hybrids, um, I've heard that the hybrids have like the black line going down their back to the tip of their nose. That fish did not have it, but they ended up classifying it as a hybrid. I don't know if I believe it, but whatever. But it was caught on a half ounce chatterbait. This one here's just a quarter ounce. But it was caught on a half ounce chatterbait. But anyway, get back to this bait here. I'm going for multi-species with this bait as well. This bait I've caught bluegill. I've caught bass. I've caught, or uh, I've not caught, but I've seen crappie try to eat this thing. I've seen them, I've had them come up out of the water for it. And these are just a really good bait. I've caught big bass and small, amount, small bass on this. And that is this little popper. Now you might look at it and you're thinking, I've never seen a popper like that. These are very, very hard to find. I've only found them in one Walmart. I've been to multiple Walmarts. I've been to multiple Bass Pro Shops. I've been to a lot of um, Gander Mountains and, and uh, Cabela's. I've only found these specific baits in one Walmart. Now, I don't know if it's just a rare bait and they only sell it in certain places, but if you guys probably know what he actually lives up there, but there's a place called Terre Haute, Indiana. We go there every very once in a while because it's quite a, quite a drive. But that's the place up there has a Walmart. That is the only place that I've been able to find these. And these are Cotton Cordell Little Poppers. They got a very big real feather. These are not fabric or anything. These are actual feather poppers. And I've caught bluegill, and my mom, she actually has a picture. Um, I don't know if it'll show up very well on here. I'll try to show it to you guys. I might be able to get it, um, but I'm, I'm going to look for it real quick. But I actually have a picture of a bluegill that I hooked with that popper. There it is. I don't know how well you guys are going to see it. There's the picture. I don't know how well you guys are even going to see that, but I actually hooked a three inch bluegill, something I was trying to imitate with that popper for bass with that popper. Um, actually, what was happening was the bass were uh, blowing up on bluegill. So I was casting this little popper out into the middle, hoping I could get a bass on top water, and I was videoing it. And I actually had the video camera die right as I was reeling in this little bluegill. So my mom ended up taking a picture of it and sending it to my phone. But I actually caught a three inch long bluegill on this, I don't know, let's see, what, how long is it? I think it's an inch and a half, two inch. Yeah, it's two inch, two inch long popper. So, I mean, if a three inch long bluegill is gonna try to eat this, just about anything's gonna try to eat this. Just like with these little swim baits. These little swim baits are gonna catch just about everything. This little popper has caught just about everything. I'm waiting for a crappie to come up on it. I've had crappie hit topwater baits before. I mean, I accidentally lost about a two and a half pound crappie one time um, on a topwater, tarp, um, a little topwater torpedo made by Hedden. I cast it out. This was back before I knew the crappie had like paper thin mouths. So I had one come up in super clear water. We could tell it was a big black crappie. Come up there, hit it, and I just jacked it like a frogfish. And there was no way I was going to even remotely keep that fish pinned because um, I just ripped his face off. <laughs> but yeah, those are the four baits, mainly three baits that you can actually buy, like, um, you know, just just about everywhere. Um, swim baits, you know, if, I mean, I make them in different colors, white, gray, black, green, red, chartreuse. I'm going to be selling this clear color soon, hopefully. Um, probably end up going to go, <clears throat> excuse me this uh, this week sometime fishing because it is spring break and hopefully I'll be able to do it and go out fishing um thinking either Thursday or Friday it's supposed to be up to 55 or so and not raining which is good uh, might be able to go out and do some fishing then uh, that would be awesome if we do um but something else I want to tell you guys about 
I've been talking about doing the tournaments. You guys know I really want to do tournaments this year. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking. And the problem is, is tournaments are going to be on, are in during turkey season. The first tournament of the year is going to be during turkey season. Um, and what I'm thinking about doing, because turkey season lasts from April 9th to May 10th. I don't think I'm going to do the, um, what is it called, turkey tournaments, um, the bass fishing tournaments this, or this month. Um, I might do them. Because there is another one, I think, April 30th or something like that. Like in later April. Um, but the one on April 11th, I don't think I'm going to do it. Because, or April 13th? I don't know. Let me get my phone out again. I have such a horrible memory sometimes. Especially when it comes to things that are important. Okay, let me get this up here. Okay, so... The first tournament of the year will be April 14th, and the second public tournament will be April 21st. So I might do the 21st, April 21st, because between April and the next month, the, the next one is going to be May 20th, uh, wait, is that May 21st? May 19th. So I think I'm going to end up doing... Um, the April 21st tournament, maybe, um, unless something happens. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to do the first tournament because of turkey season. I want to get out there and do some turkey hunting. Uh, so yeah. Uh, let me know your opinion on that. Let me know if you think that I should go ahead and do tournaments and turkey hunting, or you think that I should just go turkey hunting and wait for the tournaments for a later date. Because, I mean... April in Illinois for bedding fish or deep fish, it can be either a, it could be the greatest time of your life or it can be the worst because especially with a tournament where you're trying to win money, you can sit there for hours and not get a bite or you can sit there and get a bite every cast. It's very, very tricky to get on that certain bite. Let me know your opinion though. Do you think that I should go ahead and do the tournament um, April 14th, or do you think that I should just go ahead with the turkey hunting, get a turkey, and then hopefully do the tournaments the 20th, 21st? Let me know your opinion. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out Yak Daddy. I'll have his link somewhere, either description or in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.